This time, it's all about similar ghost stories. Are you ready to face the fear? Once, in a cafe, I heard a story from a colleague at work. Mr. K, the colleague, once worked at a food and beverage establishment in Suzukino when he was younger. One day, after an early shift, he and a senior colleague, who also had an early shift, decided to stop by a bar. Since both Mr. K and the senior loved their drinks, they left the bar before the day change, planning to drink more seriously at the senior's place. The senior's apartment was located near a river called Susan River, a short walk from Sasukino, so they decided to walk there along the river. As they approached the apartment and the hustle and bustle of the city faded, making the surroundings quiet, they started hearing footsteps from behind. Turning around, they saw a young boy wearing a baseball cap walking behind them. The boy kept his head down and walked silently. Considering the time, they wondered what was wrong but started walking towards the apartment again. The boy followed them again. By then, Mr. K expressed that they both intuitively understood that the boy walking behind them was no longer living. There was no concrete proof, but the atmosphere was already eerie. Thinking it would be problematic if the boy followed them all the way to the apartment, they exchanged glances and stopped in their tracks. The boy behind them also stopped. According to Mr. K, it was unusually quiet with no one else around, and there were only the three of them on the night road. After a few attempts to communicate, the boy just stood there, head down, silent. Thinking there was no need to hold back with someone who wasn't human, especially after having some drinks, as Mr. K reasoned. Out of curiosity, Mr. K reached for the boy's baseball cap. Underneath, there was a face without eyes. Asked what he did then, he said they just ran away, shocked as they were. Mr. K answered. When asked what it was like, he said it looked just like a living person. You could touch it, and it was clear there was something there. There was a unique presence, but that's something words can't describe. Later on, by chance, he bumped into an old friend from high school, and while nibbling on grilled chicken skewers at a bar, their conversation turned to ghost stories. I've got a real special one. It happened to me last year, he said, so I listened. The setting and situation were strikingly similar to Mr. K's story. There were footsteps from behind, he said, and I asked, was it a kid in a baseball cap? No, it was a little girl in a kindergarten uniform. She was crying, he replied. In a desolate place, did you see her face? What did it look like? Covered in blood. After hearing Mr. K's story, I've come across three similar cases in the same place under similar circumstances. All are nearly identical, but the apparitions vary. Mr. K saw a boy in a baseball cap, the friend saw a kindergartner, and another case involved a girl who seemed to be in elementary school. In all these instances, pairs of men encountered severely injured, bleeding children. Local rumors suggest that if you dig up the dirt in the area, you'll find the bodies of several children, with a pair of men responsible. Every time I remember, I find myself checking the local newspapers, half expecting to see this story unfold. How did you find this story? If anyone from around Sose River is here, please let us know if it's a true story. Ah, but I won't be going there myself. I don't want to be cursed. However, if it's a harmless ghost, I might want to see it. Until next time, stay tuned.